Thank you, Mr. Chair. You are now live. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so I will call this meeting to order of our Community Planning and Economic uh, Development Standing Committee. Uh, so we'll start with our roll call. Um, so I'll just go through and we can test everyone's volume and uh, technical stuff and uh, get everyone uh, online here. So uh, we'll start uh, with uh, Councillor Purdy. Good morning. Good morning. Looking forward to our meeting today. Happy to be here. Thank you, Councillor Purdy. Uh, next, uh, Councillor Cuddle. We have Councillor Cuddle for this morning. Good morning there, Mr. Chair and uh, fellow colleagues and staff and anyone else who may be watching. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Uh, Councillor Lovelace. Good morning, Mr. Chair, colleagues, staff, uh, everyone online. Looking forward to talking about construction noise today. A favorite topic, I'm sure. Uh, and so just confirming, Simon, uh, I have on the notes, Councillor Smith and Councillor Blackburn will both be delayed joining us this morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. I will cede the chair when Councillor Blackburn shows up. Um, okay, uh, we, do, we have our, do we have any guest councillors out there? Uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, invitations uh, were sent to uh, uh, two other councillors, but uh, I don't believe that um, uh, they are joining uh, this meeting as of this time. Okay, good enough. So we'll move. Uh, we'll we do have quorum. Uh, so we'll move ahead uh, to the approval of the minutes from July fourteenth. Uh, would someone like to move the minutes? So moved, Mr. Chair. Moved by Councillor Lovelace, a second for that. I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Our minutes are approved. Uh, so approval of the order of business, additions and deletions. Mr. Clerk, do we have any additions or deletions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to uh, stand committee, uh, there are no requests for additions or deletions as of this time. Um, we uh, do have um, uh, three speakers um, uh, for uh, registered for uh, public participation, uh, and I can confirm that uh, those are all uh, available and uh, in the queue as attendees for this meeting. Uh, so if there is a desire for um, a standing committee to uh, move the order of business to um, uh, uh, bring forward the um, uh, the matter of public participation before staff items, uh, there's certainly the ability to do so. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Clerk. Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll ask the committee for their opinion on that. Uh, it is something that we have done in the past when we do have speakers that wish to speak on an item on our agenda. And I believe two of our three speakers this morning uh, want to speak on construction noise to us. Uh, so uh, what is, is would anyone from the committee like to move that? What is the wish? Would we like to hear from the public first before we move to the staff? Seeing some head nods at Councillor Purdy. I'm just wondering, do we know what time Councillor Smith and Blackburn will be arriving? Like, would, they, would it be important for them to hear the public participation? Uh, I don't think we have an exact time for that. Okay. And uh, I mean, they can always watch uh, afterwards uh, when you're not at the meeting, you're going to miss some portion of it, right? So we they either uh, miss public participation or they miss uh, parts of a staff presentation. Uh, the beauty of recording is they can always catch up. Okay. Uh, so does any, would anyone like to amend the order of business to move public participation or would the committee like to hear from staff first? Um, I'll, I'll amend to hear the public participation first. I'll move that. Okay. Yeah, I'll move second back. that. Thank you. Moved and second. So all those in favor of amending the order of business to do public participation as our uh, ahead of the staff reports, say aye. 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 All right. So we've amended the order of business. Um, so I, uh, now I'd be looking for, I guess we have to approve the order of business. Uh, if there's nothing, uh, if there's no further uh, changes to be made. 
Hearing none, uh, can we move someone move the approval of the order of business? I'll move the approval of the order of business. I'll second. Second by Councillor Purdy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are all those opposed? Okay, so that carries. We have an approved order of business. Uh, moving along, uh, business arising out of the minutes. We have none. Uh, any declarations of conflict of interest this morning from anyone on committee? Uh, hearing none, uh, we have no motions of reconsideration, no motions of rescission. We have no deferred business. We have no tabled matters. Uh, correspondence, petitions, and delegations. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to standing committee, uh, there were several pieces of uh, general correspondence um, uh, we've, um, uh, from Christina Lovett, uh, John Sutherland, uh, Harold Epstein, uh, Peggy Cameron, and David Garrett. Uh, all correspondence uh, has been circulated to uh, members of uh, standing committee. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, does anyone uh, for committee have any petitions? No petitions this morning. Uh, we have uh, no presentations from the public scheduled. Uh, we have no information items brought forward. Um, so now this wouldn't bring us to staff, but of course we have moved public participation up. So we'll move into that phase now. I would just like to remind committee as we start this, this is not, um, these are not booked presentations. This is public participation and the uh, form of this is not a back and forth. We let the members of the public speak. Uh, but it's not one of the, it's not the public hearing sort of setup that you might be familiar with where we ask questions of clarification. Uh, so Mr. Clerk, who do we have first uh, up for public participation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe first will be uh, Duncan uh, Williams, uh, President and CEO of Construction Association of Nova Scotia. And uh, I believe my colleague is uh, just setting up and uh, unmuting now. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, the floor is yours when, whenever you're able, if you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me, can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Thank you. The floor Fantastic. is yours, sir. You have uh, five minutes. My understanding is I do have five minutes, so I'll try to be quick as I uh, go through our uh, list of thoughts here. Um, we know that the noise bylaw is before the committee right now, and I guess we have some points from an industry point of view that we would like to raise as you consider what is being presented to you by staff. Um, I guess the first comment would be on the magnitude of the response. Um, number one, uh, we've got 150 construction related complaints since 2017, which works out to about one per 12 days. Uh, 11 of those I will um, somewhat tongue in cheek state that are related to music on job sites. Um, so the numbers uh, certainly are very, very low overall, considering the fact that we have a very active construction industry in Halifax um, and are growing at a fairly rapid pace. Um, I think we can all agree that development is de desperately necessary in this city. Um, there are some serious concerns with the staff report uh, in terms of hours of operation and the requirements to reduce significantly when it comes to rock breaking, demolition, et cetera. Um, that will have a very negative impact on industry. Um, for one, uh, project lengths don't change because bylaws do. So a project that takes 40 hours to build still takes 40 hours. So we can do that in a span of four days at 10 hours, five days at eight hours, et cetera. Um, cutting back on the number of hours that construction is able to work uh, will have a very negative and opposite intent uh, in terms of the effect on neighboring residential properties and uh, residents such as yourselves as, this, as we have right now. I think one of the other considerations that we have to make are around the impact on uh, labor itself. Uh, right now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the labor market in Nova Scotia for construction is extremely tight uh, to the point where a lot of public works are seeing either no low number of bidders or no bidders, uh, for example. Um, this is not a good healthy condition that we would uh, want to see sustained in the long run, an industry is taking 
measures to try and address that through reaching out to new um, communities and ask them to participate in the industry. However, that's not going to happen overnight um, and it is going to take some time. So in the meantime, we have a very difficult labor crunch to deal with. I would use a uh, crisis, but I don't want to scare people. It is getting very, very, very difficult though. I think those two things are considerations that you need to make as you ponder your options here. Uh, I would also like to highlight the fact that material and supplies uh, have escalated in price significantly in the last 18 months. We all know the reasons. I won't spend time going on that, but everything from shipping canals to COVID have all had an impact on supplies. So uh, that is already causing enough upheaval in construction throw in changes in hours that are out of line with other jurisdictions uh, really doesn't help the matter. I think it's also important, and this is one thing I do agree with in the staff report that you have in front of you, is uh, allowing staff that you've hired to carry out the activities and wishes of the council, uh, allowing them to make decisions on exemptions, I think is a good thing. Having uh, council involved in some of those, frankly, is a waste of everybody's time and is unnecessary. It also extends and creates uh, scheduling problems for construction projects uh, in a significant way. By giving that authority to staff and freeing them from political interference will also allow them to be able to carry out their tasks in a reasonable, responsible way and hold themselves and be held accountable by council. In your report that you have, Environment Canada is uh, referenced as a source of data stating that, you know, what we've been uh, stating all along that the construction season in Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia is very short. Um, that is not actually um, a direct correlation in terms of practicality. The final comments I would leave you with is we have a crisis in housing and affordable housing right now, and there's a lot of uh, parties that are pointing the finger at construction and development. I would strongly recommend that uh, you take a very close look at the impact that this will have on the ability for us to reverse what is a very um, uh, concerning trend in terms of affordable housing and available housing right now. Um, in fact, there are much deeper issues at play here that we really do need to dig into. But shortening the hours of construction will exacerbate that situation even more and will actually create more uh, noise in neighborhoods for longer periods of time. That is my commentary, so thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation this morning, uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, so moving along, um, who would we have next, Mr. Clark? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have uh, Grant Faltbank, Executive Director of Nova Scotia Road uh, Builders Association. Thank you. Uh, the floor would be yours. There we go. All right, great. Thank you very much for this. Uh, I'm uh, going to cover some uh, similar ground to what Duncan has and uh, and go over it from the road builder's perspective. Uh, we've been dealing with this topic uh, on and off for many years. It comes up uh, every few years. Uh, when it has come up in the past, we have made our, our case uh, that we would like to see things stay status quo. Uh, that is certainly still our position. Uh, we are opposed to the, all of the changes that are suggested here, particularly on hours of work. Uh, the, the place where we agree uh, with, uh, with what Duncan has said and, and what is in the report is with regard to the approval of exemptions. Definitely should be done by staff, not by council. Uh, it will uh, lead to much more efficiency and, uh, and uh, the ability for people to get work done. So we support that. Uh, I, I'm building on, on what Duncan was talking about with regard to uh, the the need at the moment for construction. You know, you you I, I'm confused. Uh, I don't understand why we would be looking to reduce hours for construction 
in HRM at this time when you are facing uh, two things. One, we already have a housing shortage, so we need all kinds of construction. Uh, and the city at the same time is also saying it wants to double, not double, but dramatically increase its population as we go along. There's going to be a huge need for construction. And this initiative, if, if, if followed, if approved, would reduce our ability to do that. So you're going to put yourself in a really bad spot with regard to trying to meet the needs of the community that, that you're serving. Uh, and there's a particularly harsh approach to rock breaking in this situation, dramatically taking hours away from them. Uh, and that is going to really uh, draw out completion dates significantly. Uh, and you're going to have a lot more noise for a lot longer than what you have right now. Another aside piece on the rock breaking, because you're dropping their hours like 50 hours a week. You're taking weekends and, and holidays away from them. Uh, there's a very large uh, seasonal workforce that is employed in the rock breaking uh, industry in, in that work. And those folks are going to lose a whack of hours every week if you make this change. And that's really going to affect their ability to make a living and, and get themselves in a, in a good spot. Uh, the survey, our opinion, flawed at best. What was asked was, uh, uh, what, you're asking people, do you like noise in your neighborhood? And, and if you don't, would you like to see it reduced? That was the question. To summarize that survey, what would the answer be? to any of those questions. Uh, the key question that was not asked in the survey was, are you willing to see your property taxes increase to accomplish this noise reduction? Because that's what's gonna happen. Their taxes are going up because the cost of, of uh, construction is gonna go up if you reduce the hours. Um, and, and again, uh, Duncan talked a, a little bit about this. You shorten the hours, what you're going to do is exacerbate the problem because you are now going to have the completion dates much longer than they were before. Yeah, you might have the noise during the day, not so much at night, but or, or the weekends for rock breaking, but you are going to have that noise for a lot longer because completion dates are gonna get moved out. You can't shorten the work hours. You have to get the work done. So your costs are gonna go up. You're gonna exacerbate the problem with regard to how much noise you have, in our opinion, this is this is a very poor move uh, to make for uh, for HRM. Thank you for that. Thank you for your presentation. So moving along, Mr. Clerk, uh, I think we have one more presenter this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we have uh, uh, Wendy McDonald, a resident from Clayton Park. And thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Ms. McDonald, uh, the floor would be yours. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McDonald, you can uh, begin whenever you're ready. Okay, I, I can't see anything, but um, hopefully you can see me. Can um, see you thank you, you for... <clears throat> I don't know who's on board with regards to staffing, but um, <clears throat> my thank you for encouraging part public participation. And my um, thoughts this morning focus on recreation, which means different things to each of us. Um, team or individual sports or active living, leisure, lifelong learning, cultural or other uh, things such as an appreciation of nature. I live in District 12 and um, currently we're um, one of the densest communities in the HRM. The um, recent report that went to council back in January talked about having a generous supply of recreation facilities. However, uh, when one took a second look at that report, it was noted that something like the 
linear trail now called the Mainland North Trail was 30 meters wide. Um, this added significantly to our generous supply of recreation facilities. <clears throat> it's because of the power line easement, which of course most of you will be aware is not really accessible to the general public. And I won't belittle that, be, uh, belabor that issue, but um, you know, gated fields at the mainland common accessible only to sports teams and so on. We have very little functional recreation facilities no community garden, no volley, beach volleyball, no splash pad, no community uh, garden uh, coming in the future where, because just there is no space where water could be accessible. <clears throat> the, the existing park spaces that we have are not labeled as such. Uh, signage seems to be a challenge in this district. Um, even the mainland common does not have a sign. And that to me is an oversight long overdue. I have made use of 311 over the years, but it does take time. Uh, I mentioned the mainland north trail. We've been waiting three years for the sign project that was contracted out with the support of Bicycle Nova Scotia. Signs are still not in place. And um, I understand they will be built before um, the end of the year or in, introduced before the end of the year. <clears throat> I just think that programming as well as the facilities themselves need to be um, identified. Studies have been done on facilities and um, fields, but I don't see any studies on programming. We do have the Canada Game Centre, which is not accessible to a lot of people in this community. They drive to Spryfield or to Bedford for their day camps or whatever programming they choose to include for their young families. Sorry about the background noise. We're having our chimney cleaned this morning. Um, I just leave that with you. And um, I've stepped down as a longtime member of a trail local trails group. I just found the uh, changes over the years from a combined recreation and active transportation uh, review of trails into two separate silos with little or no communication was very difficult as a volunteer. And I um, look forward to community engagement when it's possible. We want to get back to uh, helping staff and others understand what our District 12 recreation needs are. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so Mr. Clark, I believe that uh, concludes public participation for this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you to all our presenters. Uh, so we will now uh, go back uh, to our staff reports. So we'll see we're the main event of the day, 12.1.1, potential changes to bylaw N200 respecting construction related noise. And I understand uh, Ann, our, Ann Totten is with us and will be giving a presentation. Can't hear her, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was just wondering if she, if uh, Anne, if you've started speaking, we can't hear you. If uh, if no one's speaking, the presentation's keyed up. Good 
Mr. Chair, uh, this is uh, Simon, legislative assistant. Uh, we may uh, wish to take a five minute break and just uh, allow perhaps uh, ICT staff to um, uh, see if they can assist uh, and with uh, her uh, microphone. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, yep, we can, we can hear, you hear you now. I'm seeing nods. People can hear me now. Okay, yep. great. Yeah. <laughs> My okay. continued headset is still looking at the bugs, so I apologize. No yes, problem. So thank you. Um, yeah, so we'd just like to walk you through uh, some of the research and engagement that we undertook to develop this report and then just um, kind of walk you through the recommendations. So we'll dive right in. Um, as you know, there's a couple council motions here that we're considering. Uh, one is from this committee asking staff to look at options for potential changes to the noise bylaw that would align uh, hours of construction noise with, uh, and I quote, the reasonable standards when adjacent to residential areas. That's the original council motion. There's also one from last January asking us to look at rock breaking and consider the environmental and noise impacts of rock breaking uh, and whether we should look at additional regulations in that area. So just um, a bit of background here, we have a few bylaws that regulate uh, noise and construction. The first is, of course, the noise bylaw, which permits construction related noise uh, at the same time as most other noise generating activities. So a total of 93 and a half hours per week. Uh, the noise bylaw does not apply to municipal, provincial or federal projects. Uh, Halifax Water, the Bridge Commission, Nova Scotia Power and Natural Gas Companies and Telecom Companies. Uh, the requirement is as long as property owners within 30 meters of a site receive written notification, they, those organizations can operate outside the noise bylaw hours. We also have the streets bylaw. Uh, generally, municipal contracts point to uh, operations within the noise bylaw hours. But under the streets bylaw, the municipal engineer can permit work hours outside of those permitted under the noise bylaw. So it's a bit of an inconsistency between the two. And we're just recommending that this inconsistency be eliminated. Uh, a housekeeping amendment to the noise bylaw that would align the two. Essentially, um, companies that receive a permit from the municipal engineer would be added to the list of exempt organizations for the duration of that contract. Uh, lastly, we have a blasting bylaw that restricts blasting to weekdays between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and requires uh, engineering professionals to be involved in blast design and monitoring. Uh, blasting is defined as the handling, preparation, and use of explosives when it comes to excavation and construction, whereas rock breaking is the non-explosive methods of removing rock, so jackhammering or percussion hammer. Uh, we'll just quickly run through. We do have quite a number of bylaws and admin orders that regulate the environmental impacts of rock breaking and rock crushing. So the construction site mitigation AO includes uh, stormwater management and runoff pollution controls, sediment and erosion plans, emission controls, and dust pollution controls. The trees bylaw requires a mitigation plan for any um, drainage patterns or any nutrients that would be that might interfere with water air or any nutrients that trees would need. The grade alteration bylaw requires a stormwater management report uh, and uh, erosion and sedimentation control plan and the lot grading bylaw requires a lot grading plan and storm drainage system plan. So in all these cases, these plans and proposals have to be submitted to municipal engineering staff for approval before any permit is issued. And so given the level of existing control, we didn't consider a need for new municipal regulations at this time regarding the environmental impacts. So moving to the jurisdictional scan, we looked at noise bylaws in 11 Canadian municipalities from all across Canada. Um, 7 a.m. is pretty much the start time in every one of them. I think Vancouver was 7.30, but 7 a.m. was the pretty consistent start time on weekdays. 
Uh, the weekday end time for construction does tend to vary. Uh, in Ontario and British Columbia municipalities, it tended to be a little earlier, ending between 6 and 8 p.m. In Western and Prairie municipalities, it tended to be later, between 9 and 10 p.m. Uh, from Atlantic Canadian perspective, uh, St. John and Moncton we looked at, and their end times were 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. respectively. Uh, in most cases, municipalities had reduced hours on weekends, generally a later start time and an earlier end time for construction noise, uh, and four municipalities did not allow construction at all on Sundays and holidays. Uh, all municipalities had staff approved exemptions except Moncton. Uh, they were the only one that, like us, requires exemptions to go to council. Uh, we did look for bylaws and regulations around blasting and rock breaking. Uh, it's not a very common thing to find, likely a factor of our geography and our topography. Uh, the ones we did find were based in British Columbia, where some municipalities require permits for blasting and rock breaking, and they generally request uh, restrict the hours to weekday during the daytime. So moving to HRM, uh, the map here shows the um, construction permits uh, issued over about a four year period or three year period, sorry. The blue dots are new construction and the red dots are renovations. The bigger the, the dot, the bigger the value of the permit. Uh, you can see quite a concentration in Bedford West and in Halifax Peninsula and Hammonds Plains to some extent. So they're undergoing quite a bit of construction. Uh, we'd also looked at the complaint data as uh, Mr. Williams mentioned, we got the noise complaints over about a four year period almost. Uh, there were 870 complaints related to noise, and of those, we identified 150 as being related to construction, so about 17%. Uh, the biggest portion of those complaints were related to uh, noise from a site before 7 a.m., and followed by complaints about rock breaking and jackhammering. We undertook uh, some stakeholder engagement in the development of this report. So uh, our buildings and compliance division meets regularly with construction industry stakeholders. So uh, construction industry of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia Road Builders and Nova Scotia Home Builders Association. And those of us involved in this report joined the meetings that they have with compliance on several occasions to discuss the noise bylaw. Uh, the industry stakeholders emphasized the concerns that they raised today that shorter hours can lead to longer project timelines and higher costs, uh, noting that the cost of wages and supplies are both going up. Uh, they also explained how certain stages of construction projects require extended hours, particularly concrete pouring and finishing, and those often don't align with the noise bylaw. Once you start pouring concrete, you have to keep going till it's done. Uh, whether it's after 9.30 or not, and that the current exemption process takes uh, too long to accommodate that, about a six to eight week period instead of, well, six to eight week period to get through council. Uh, any changes to morning hours also caused concern. Uh, 7 a.m. start usually means that trucks are already in place on a site and ready to go and not getting involved with morning commutes and school buses and that kind of thing. Uh, We've, we felt from a staff perspective that this forum was really helpful and I understand that building and compliance also find it very useful that it's a way to build a stronger relationship with the construction industry and also raise issues that if we hear about any from a complaint perspective, they can go directly to their members and communicate it. So um, we just wanted to say that it's a really good forum and intend on continuing to use it in the time going ahead. Uh, earlier in the process of developing this report, we also met with the business improvement districts and some business owners in the regional center, particularly. Uh, they did express some construction fatigue, but also noted that um, they'd like projects done faster, particularly things like we're looking at Spring Garden Road streetscaping and things like that. Uh, would like it done ASAP. 
terms of broader public engagement, uh, we developed an online questionnaire in the summer of 2020. It was the height of COVID, so we were pretty much restricted to online consultations. So we did develop this questionnaire and it was live for about a month, put out on Shape Your City and promoted through social media channels. We received 941 responses and the map here on the screen shows the responses by postal code. Uh, you can see a concentration in uh, Halifax Peninsula, Bedford West, Hammonds Plains, where the, where the construction is taking place quite a bit as well. Uh, we did ask uh, for people to note if they were involved with the construction industry, and we got about 9% of responses from people involved with that as well. Uh, we asked people to talk about how often they'd experienced construction-related noise. So almost 60% had experienced it about over 10 times in the past five years. We asked about people's level of concern and we had about 55% who were very concerned and 25 somewhat presented concerned about noise. We had 9% uh, who were not at all concerned and 4% somewhat unconcerned. Uh, we asked about uh, different types of mitigation uh, ideas for construction noise and adjustments to hours. So uh, we, and the, essentially we asked about it for weekdays, uh, Saturdays and Sundays and holidays. And the most popular response was uh, instituting an earlier end time on weekdays. We had about 64% who asked for an earlier end time than 9.30 PM uh, and 56% wanted a later start time. Uh, there was also support for reducing hours on weekends, but as well as a significant number of comments for no construction at all permitted on Sundays and holidays. Increased enforcement was also another theme. Uh, currently, our bylaw enforcement officers are really available during weekday business hours. And so if a complaint comes in after those hours, uh, it either falls to someone to deal with the following day or have police come. So uh, a theme that we heard a lot was increasing enforcement so someone could respond in the moment. So moving to the proposed changes that we've put forward for you today, uh, we're attempting to balance both the public concerns that we've been hearing and I think that you've also been hearing on council while minimizing the impact to the construction industry uh, given their their comments about extended timelines and increased costs. Um, starting with rock breaking, rock breaking in terms of its noise and vibration impact is very similar to blasting. So we are recommending that all types of rock breaking be consolidated under the same hours, which would be uh, weekdays 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That, that's the same as the blasting bylaw permits. Uh, it also means that rock breaking, which is currently uh, under the definition of construction in the bylaw, would be pulled out and a new uh, a new definition created for it, which essentially would be uh, using a jackhammer or percussion hammer. On the change to hours, uh, we did hear loud and clear that there is a strong desire for some sort of limits on construction noise. Uh, it's possible that this has been influenced by the number of people working from home in the past year and a half, uh, but it does need to be balanced with the needs of the construction industry to finish projects in a timely and cost-effective manner. So we are recommending that we change the end time for construction hours on weekdays from 9.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. That would be seven and a half fewer hours per week. Uh, the, the end time change would tend to mean that the hour reduction happens when larger projects tend to have already ended for the day. They often end around the end of the business day. And that would give residents more time in the evenings without noise, uh, which aligns with the top request or sorry, top response in the questionnaire. Um, this change, though, would be contingent on the changes to the exemption process, which I'll just get to on the next slide. Uh, lastly, we did conduct a regulatory and business impact assessment as per Council's Regulatory Modernization Administration Administrative Order. Uh, that did find that reduced hours of construction will have some impacts on project costs and timelines, uh, projected increased labor costs of up to 10% and a 2 to 4% increase in project timelines, although no new capital or operating costs. 
these, that these increases would be partially mitigated by changes to the staff exemption process. So we are proposing that staff be permitted to approve exemption requests in three specific uh, scenarios. And that is when extra hours are required to complete concrete finishing or concrete pouring. If there's a need to temporarily reduce noise impacts during the day as outlined in a project's construction mitigation plan. Uh, or there is limited access to specialized trades or equipment, so only available for seven days or less. Uh, this would, so this exemption process, we estimate would take the approval time from six to eight weeks as it goes to council down to about two weeks if staff can do it. And so would align better with project timelines uh, on the ground. Uh, it would also increase certainty for residents in that it, they would know when extended noise would take place and for how long. Uh, the buildings and compliance division would be the ones to handle this process is what we're proposing. So they would issue a permit that set, or sets duration, terms and conditions for exemptions and require notification by the developer or project proponent to deliver notice to all properties within 30 meters of the site. And we're proposing that this exemption change would take uh, three months after council approval, just to give time to develop forms and approval processes. So this is the recommendation for you, and that's the end of the presentation. So um, happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, thank you, thank you, Anne. Um, I'm wondering if someone—I uh, don't want to have lost my screen here of our council colleagues. Uh, I'm wondering if someone from committee would be willing to put the motion on the floor and then we can have a discussion. I'll put it on the floor. Uh, according to the graphic, I've had some of the most I think complaints. people are on mute. I, I see people speaking but can't hear. Am I on mute? Can you hear me? Uh, well, I can hear you, Councillor Smith. I can okay. also hear Anne. Although not anymore now, <laughs> she's quiet. Yeah. Anyway, Councillor Smith, proceed with putting the motion on the floor, and we can yeah, start that. I'll, uh, I'll here. put up. Yeah, yeah, I'll put on the floor, and, and just in case people have questions for Anne, I guess she'll need to hear us. So uh, the motion is that Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee recommend that Regional Council adopt Bylaw uh, N two zero seven, amending Bylaw N two hundred, respecting noise, as set out in attachment B of the July sixteenth, twenty twenty one report. Uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. Is there a second for that motion? Seconded. Second by Councillor Lovelace. Okay, Councillor Smith, the uh, uh, floor is yours if, uh, if, there, if you have any questions. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering if, Anne, can you give me a wave? Can you hear me? Uh, we no. can't hear you, Anne, anymore. Okay. Okay, you're back. Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear me. Yeah, I think I need the mic on this. Uh, we can hear you, Anne, but uh, it doesn't sound like you can hear us. Maybe it would take a minute or so where someone can maybe give her a call and help her. Yeah, maybe we'll take five minutes. It'd be pretty hard to do this discussion without our key staffer. Uh, uh, are you uh, back in business, Anne? I hope so. Can you hear me? It, you're really there's a real echo um, coming in on your end. Yeah, I, let's just take five. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll agree with Councillor Smith. Lowe. We'll take five minutes here to sort that out. Uh, so we'll reconvene at ten fifty. Thank you, uh, colleague. No one's speaking.
Hello, Tess. Okay. Are we are we back, Mr. Clark? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are back. Uh, we'll just ask uh, Anne to uh, unmute just to test to make sure that we're all good. Uh, I don't. Not sure if she's here. It's a uh, just a dark screen. Oh, there she is. Uh, we can't hear you, Anne. We continue to have uh, some technical difficulties hearing you, Anne. Can you do it without the um, earphones? Can you unplug your earphones? Um, and reset your uh, your audio input. Maybe it's easier for a call. If I may uh, quickly um, jump in here, this, uh, uh, while I while Anne would, would like would be the best person to answer questions, it's, it's a report that myself and Kasha Toda, who's on the line, work closely with Anne, and so um, until the technical challenge is sorted out it is it is something we, we, we can still proceed and we can do our best to answer to answer any council questions okay let's uh, uh, uh thank you i can also jump in same one <laughs> yeah i can also suggest that um uh it may be possible to call in and uh speak on the phone as an option as well that's that's uh probably the best approach at this point if um if ann could dial in um and perhaps we can proceed that's with some down. questions here Hello. Yeah, I, I've just switched computers in an attempt to get this working. You sound very clear now. So, okay. so far, so good. All uh, right. And, and, you know, don't feel bad at all. This is exactly the sort of thing that uh, all of us are used to from COVID. And every one of us has been in your shoes at some point at this right. point of the pandemic. So um, I, I, we'll go back to Councillor Smith now for some questions. All right. How much time do I got left, Mr. Chair? We're going to start right <laughs> now in five minutes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Works works for me. Uh, I'll be I'll be quick. I only I only have two two quick questions. So again, Anne, thanks for presenting. I know a lot of work has gone into getting to this point, um, as you mentioned, from many motions. So I appreciate that. And this is one of the issues I hear from residents a lot. I I had a two complaints yesterday regarding noise complaints construction. So this is. Um, definitely uh, a good ship. So my two questions related to this is, I'm, I'm happy to see that we're putting the rock uh, breaking and crushing in one category. And um, what I'm wondering is one of the, one of the 
one of the questions I get from residents is, well, we didn't get notice from the contractor that this doesn't didn't happen. And we know there's requirements for what type of notice that's supposed to be given and et cetera, et cetera. But two things can happen. Sometimes somebody might fall out of that notification area and the blasting might be larger than, than what our notification area is, or they received it and it got lost in the, the mail with many other things they might have received. So uh, one of the questions I have is, is it possible for us to, um, in GIS or in online to create blasting, um, a blasting, I'm not sure what it would be like a blasting uh, either area or blasting radius that folks could type in their address or even just look as we look for permits online and just see, oh, there's blasting happening in my area. I'm outside of the notification area, but at least I know that blasting is happening um, there. Um, so that's, that's the one question. If, if, if there's a way we can do some kind of front facing uh, blasting, I don't know what it would call be called. The other one is related to the, the, the rock breaking, crushing, blasting, whatever you want to call it too, is when it comes to the claims that the blasting has affected their properties, I'm just wondering if you can, one, talk a little bit about the process for folks who who might not understand a process and it'd be good to have that on on the record but also uh has there been a, a time or has there been times where we've had to step in because the contractor didn't meet the obligations within the requirements um uh, around blasting on residential properties and that was it for me um, thank you. So in regards to the first question, whether we can create some sort of online tool that is part of our discussions with uh, buildings and compliance, uh, whether we can create some sort of website that would that residents would be able to check to determine if, for example, an exemption permit has been issued. Uh, or something like blasting is going to happen. Uh, it's not something that we have currently, but it's something that we are certainly looking at doing to try to increase communication with residents. Uh, in regards to the second question regarding um, times we've had to step in, I am not aware of that, but it would probably be our engineering or our compliance uh, staff who would receive the um, any complaints or be asked to go out and check as the engineering are the ones that issue blasting permits and would know um, whether something's happening that doesn't meet the blasting bylaw. It's something we could follow up with them on. And, and it, it's fine. I was just wondering if you had any feedback about that. You don't have to do too much follow up. So just going back to the first one and I'll close here. I, I would I would support if we even need to put money in the budget to, to allow that resource to happen. I just know for me, with the complaints I get around the blasting, folks think they're in the notification area and they didn't receive notification when they really weren't um, when looking at the radius. So if I could, as the counselor, point them to, hey, just here's a link that you can check if you were actually in the notification area. And if you were and you didn't receive notification, then, then we have another process that you can follow. So, so that's really, for, for me, the only coming out of this is if there's something that could be front-facing um, for the blasting piece. I don't know if we want to open it up to others, but I just know that's one of the most intrusive aspects of what we're talking about today is, is blasting. Uh, so that, that's it for me, and, and happy to have more discussion on that in the future once you start to understand where the, where the work with the uh, building folks goes. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, so next on our list is Councillor Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and thank you to staff for bringing this, these changes forward. I really do appreciate uh, the comments as well uh, that were made uh, during the public participation uh, portion of this meeting. Um, I would like to follow up on uh, Councillor Smith's point about notification and communication, because I do think that we're failing the wider public uh, with blasting 
specifically. Uh, blasting isn't just about noise. Uh, it's also quite intrusive to uh, nearby houses, to, to walls shaking. Um, you know, I'm, I'm speaking uh, from personal experience of, of standing in the subdivision of Kingswood uh, uh, at a home which was not in the notification area, uh, but was uh, impacted. And so I do think that um, you know that, that that overall process of notification does need to be uh, looked at uh, more specifically, as well as how we communicate to those that are outside of the notification area. Um, but not just about the fact that the blasting is going to occur, but the expectation of the timeline, uh, because we know that there are large blasts that can be extremely intrusive, but then there's the smaller blasts that are continuous over time that you know really do wear on uh, families and uh, and businesses um, so I think overall we need to do a better job in communicating uh, what that process is and uh, what the expectation is for the public uh, at large but also uh, you know why it is that that blasting is occurring in the first place um, and the fact that we have trained professionals that are you know um, that are doing that blasting in those construction zones and that they know what they're doing um, and that they are following uh, very strict guidelines in the Department of Environment. You know, the provincial government is, is involved, HRM is involved. Um, so I think that we just haven't done a good enough job communicating the overall uh, expectations, the timelines, uh, and also the fact that we have um, a very controlled uh, area. Uh, so thank you so much. I hope that uh, staff can uh, address those concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Um, I'm not sure that there was a specific question, to, uh, some, some points in there for staff. So the, so the question specifically is, do we have the opportunity to do that? And is that something that's already underway or in consideration? Okay, let's uh, go to staff. Uh, thank you. So just for clarification, do we have the, <coughs> excuse me, ability to change our communication procedures yes. around blasting? Yes, um, thank you. I, I believe we do. I'll just, you know, ask if Ben knows anything more, but my understanding is we set the 30 meter rules ourselves. So we're certainly able to extend that and look at other ways of communicating with the residents. In the bylaw. Yeah, it, it's in the bylaw. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. If uh, th through to share, or if I could uh, further add to your comments is that I think that the staff report in front of you focuses on approved communications for the exemption process. So, um, you know, the website notification uh, for that uh, and didn't focus on necessarily approved communication on, on, on blasting. Um, I think as Ann pointed out, it is part of uh, something that staff is exploring um, regardless of, you know, a, a web page. Um, but if it's something that council wants specifically to see some sort of action on, then it would be, uh, something maybe perhaps you want to add to your motion or something we could take away following this meeting um, and come more prepared with that with what's possible um, for the uh, for regional council. Okay, thank you. I will consider that. I do know that um, we've had uh, a much better response uh, recently when um, uh, the developer went out of their way to put door knockers uh, and actually visit homes individually that were, uh, you know, clearly being impacted. And so that face-to-face -face opportunity to have a phone number that they could call, it was a door knocker. It wasn't just a leaflet, uh, it, you know, inside their other, you know, junk mail, that kind of thing, that there really was a, an intentional effort made uh, on behalf of this developer to communicate uh, with the public. And, and, I, and I do think that that was quite beneficial uh, setting expectations. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Uh, so next on our list would be uh, Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for um, the staff report. I found it very interesting reading it. And I, reading the report, I had a couple of concerns actually. And one of them was the communication piece that has been spoken about today. And I wasn't clear Whose responsibility is it to notify the residents? Is that the con the developer's responsibility? Is that HRM's responsibility? The it, it, it would be, it, for the case of the exemptions that we were speaking of, it would be the developer or project proponent who is required to notify residents. 
Okay, and then there was another um, topic about a website being displayed on the site of the development for folks to be able to access information about the development with specifics as to the noise, the, the different types of um, things that would be happening at, with the timelines that people would kind of understand what they would be able to take initiative, kind of like what Councillor Smith was suggesting, like just to have a place to send people to, to know what to expect. I, I feel, felt reading this report, if communications were improved, I don't think the level of um, complaints would be as high because I, I find if people understand what's coming, if they have a, if they have a end date that they know is coming or it, it just helps so much uh, to have increased communications. So I was wondering who's responsible for that website? Is that HRM or would that be the developers as well? So currently what we're proposing is that the developers would have a website, uh, an aspect of their website that talks about these, but uh, something that we're looking at doing is developing one HRM wide. So that would be something that we have for all projects, but for individual projects, it would be the developer having a website on theirs, their project, their own. Okay. The other concern that seemed to, um, come up in the report was the need for bylaw officers to be available beyond the current eight to 6 p.m. timeline. Is that something that we can also look at, like maybe in the budget process? Is that something that's been looked at before that it could be, uh, we could extend bylaw enforcement hours? The that yeah, that would be something that would come through the budget process. Budget process. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's been considered before, but given that it would be staff resourcing, it would come through the budget process. Okay, and just also looking at the jurisdictional review from the different cities in Canada, I I share the concerns of our two uh, public participants who who spoke today. I don't know how you can balance high density, the incredible desperate need for housing stock in our city, and then reducing construction hours and the rock, the, the blasting by about 50%. That's a huge, that, that's a huge implication on, on development. And I, and then of course, I also understand residents need for enjoyment of their property but uh, is this the right time I, I just felt how how are we going to meet the needs of our very growing city quickly growing city um when we're already seemingly behind I, i'm not sure i'm not sure if this is Good. W would there be an opportunity for like amending the, the time that that has been proposed uh, to be so, so there could be kind of like a compromise because it seems pretty extreme right now the the hour the reduced hours that the report is is offering is, is there any room for amending because the jurisdictional scan 9 30 p.m. and 9 30 p.m. end date end time for a weekday seems to be pretty much in the middle of a 6 to 11 p.m. and end time of, of other cities in Canada. So 9.30 seems to be pretty reasonable. Like, so I guess I'm asking, is, is there an opportunity for an amendment of these hours? Would that be something that we could consider? So uh, just uh, quickly weighed in here. Uh, as, as the committee, we are making a recommendation to regional council. Uh, if the committee wanted to, we could make an alternative recommendation. Um, it, that would be up to us to put something forward uh, and then uh, for regional to then consider. So um, we'll go to staff for response to your question regarding, you know, uh, all alternatives, but it is within the committee's uh, ability to put forward an alternate recommendation. Uh, yes, thank you. I guess I would just echo the councillor uh, that, of course, can, uh, the committee can put forward an amended recommendation with alternative hours, if so desired. 
Um, I wasn't clear on this either. In the report, statutory holidays are not, it, it's just regular shortened hours on those days. Is that correct? It wasn't proposed to eliminate construction on statutory holidays, correct? That's correct. The only change to the hours would be on weekdays for, for construction related ones. So in an effort to kind of hit a compromise, would, would there be an appetite to amend the end dates of Monday to Friday to instead of eight o'clock, maybe nine o'clock? That that's only a half hour difference at night. And yet that can make a big difference if you're, if you're at home, like to have an end time of noise by nine o'clock to still enjoy a bit of an evening without. I think we're we're at six minutes and a half, Councillor Councilor Purdy. Uh, I would suggest that if you would, if you are considering an amendment, uh, you can spend some time uh, and then while some of our other speakers are up um, and figure out what you might want to come put forward on a second go around. Uh, so next up would be uh, Councillor Cuddle for the first time, and then we'll go to Councillor Smith for a second. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, anyway, great conversation. And I wanna say thank you as well to the um, public participation presenters. Um, you know, this has been a prod it's been an issue that has been ongoing for quite some time in our city. And um, well, I, I do appreciate things like, you know, the length of a project, if it's 40 hours, it's 40 hours, um, you know, whether that's spread over four days or five days, it, the 40 hours isn't going to change. And it adds length and time to projects. But on the other hand, when you kind of look at that map of where all the construction is happening, you know, the problem isn't just the 40 hour project, it's kind of the ongoing relentless construction that's taking place with multiple projects happening within a single neighborhood. And that's where we start to get the rub between the needs of the construction industry, um, who might look at this on a project by project basis versus the larger public issue of when you have multiple projects happening all at the same time and the enjoyment of of quality of life. Um, so in, in that aspect, um, I do support what staff is recommending. It seems to be in line with industry standards um, across, across the country. Um, and, and, you, and, you know, I too get lots and lots of complaints um, about, about construction noise. So, you know, we, we do, we are growing um, this is kind of unprecedented growth in, in our, you know, within our generation of seeing this much construction happening. Um, and, and we do just need to find, you know, find that right balance. And I think what's being presented um, is reasonable within, you know, with, within that kind of um, mandate of, you know, finding something that's going to work for everybody. Um, it's never going to be perfect for everybody. I, I, I get that. You know, as for the, um, some of the, the, um, the feedback from businesses around construction noise. I, you know, that that's not just about noise. I think that's about how construction is managed as a whole and construction mitigation. You know, it's, it's also about how, you know, sites are managed. It's about opening up sidewalks. It's about, um, you know, taking care of uh, parking for workers who are on site. Um, in areas where there's business. So, you know, noise is only one piece of, of, a, of a bigger issue there with construction um, mitigation. Um, as for the map, I, I just wanna, you know, the whole thing around communication that is always so tricky for us. You know, there is like, you know, for example, we, HRM has a great site for roadworks, a roadworks map, right? Where you can go and find out where sidewalks will be closed and road closures are happening. It's updated regularly. It links back to, you know, um, development applications and permits. The thing is that a lot of people don't know about these things, right? So having this stuff sitting on our site, on a website, 
you know, it's not like everyone's, you know, the average resident is going to wake up and go, oh, I'm going to go like check uh, for an update on the roadworks map this morning. Like I, I, I'd be interested in the metrics of, of how well viewed that roadworks map is given like the amount of expense and effort that went into it versus how, how is it being used? And um, before we kind of like jump onto a blasting website or something like that, like really think about what is the right tool in this instance. And sometimes door hangers are like, you know, a lot more effective than a website that never gets looked at. Um, but I don't, I'm not saying that it never gets looked at. I look at the road works maps. I'm just curious how many other people do, um, how many people even know it exists for that, for that matter. So um, I just wanna say thanks to staff uh, for this report and um, I will be supporting the recommendations as they are presented. You're muted, Sam, if you're speaking. Ah, well, we all miss my thank you for to Councillor Cuddle then. Uh, <laughs> we're going to you, Councillor Smith, for second go-arounds. Thank you. In, in uh, this go-around, uh, I might uh, present an amendment, or if we're going to ask for something to report, I can add it to that, depending on how we approach this, because I know that the changing of time might require uh, going back to industry and having that discussion. All that to say, though, I do feel that the notification area is one that I would put forward without asking for a supplementary report, because I think that's one easy way to, to expand the, the notification and communication. Because right now at 30 meters and uh, just doing a quick Google map measurement, if we're doing 30 meters, if you were in the middle of Parade Square, technically City Hall wouldn't get a notification if we're just doing 30 meters. So, so when I look at the other cities that have, that have notification areas listed on the, the report, it's 100 plus. So I feel that maybe we should look at that um, notification area and extend that. Um, I don't know what the number is because there's, there's different numbers. There's 100, 150, 200. Um, the other thing too, within bylaw B600, which is the blasting bylaw, it has a number, uh, and I lost it. Where is it? Um, a blasting area of 32 meters. I don't, I can't, meters, kilograms and a half. It's 32 M slash kg and a half. I don't even know what that, I don't know. I, I just, I couldn't measure that. And this is the thing when residents reach out, I send them that and I, I say, I'm not exactly sure how much this is, <laughs> but this is the notification area. So even just clarifying what the areas are so folks, it's easy for them to understand would be worthwhile. Um, and since we're here, how wide of an area is 32 and slash kg and a half? Mm -hmm. Oh, Councillor. Um, my understanding is meant to be 30 meters, but I will maybe defer to Donna, who is the writer of bylaws, Donna Boudelier. And it's 9-1 in the pre-blast survey uh, uh, in the 600. Okay, good morning, counselors. Um, hoping everybody can hear me. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, sorry, I didn't write the, <laughs> I wasn't involved in the blasting by law that predates me. Um, Mr. Chair, yes. Denise, Denise Schofield, I might be able to provide a little bit of clarity. Executive Director of Parks and Recreation, but previously involved in development. Um, the, the blasting, that, that distance, it's actually a calculation, Councillor, because it depends on the weight of the blast. So depending on the charge, if it's a heavier blast, then the distance is further. So that's that's how come it's not, uh, it's not, it's not a, just a set number. Okay, got you. So thank you, thank you, Denise. Uh, so what I'm wondering is, I, I will make the amendment. I'll, I'll I'll make the amendment if we're not going to do a supplementary report. 
if we if we do one, I'll add it. If we're not going to, then I'll just make an amendment to change the blasting or the notification area to the larger. So let's uh, just hold on that. Let's go to staff right. and uh, for a suggestion uh, as to how how we should proceed from here. Because I mean, I imagine we have a couple of options. We could amend uh, amend the recommendation. We could ask for defer and ask for a supplemental, or we can send it forward and uh, tr you know ask for a supplemental for further uh, revisions afterwards. Um, is the options that strike me. Um, uh, would someone from staff like to try and comment on how they would like the committee to proceed with uh, potential amendments? Uh, so I would love to see the amendment. I think it needs to be 150 meters. Um, and that's, so I think Councillor Smith, you and I are on the same page. I think the, the, the biggest issue we're having is around communications um, and uh, expectations. And this would assist in that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Um, so, uh, staff, what uh, what would you uh, recommend the committee do in terms of how we how we should proceed here? Would we, would... Uh, in the absence of uh, other uh, comments at the moment, I would just suggest that uh, where there are potentially uh, some some detailed changes to a number of um, uh, bylaws being proposed, it may be best to uh, take a pause and uh, just ensure that we have uh, sufficient time to uh, to uh, really narrow down the, the proposed changes that are uh, uh, being proposed in terms of our drafting. Uh, so that can either be accomplished by um, uh, deferring uh, a motion, uh, in this case, to a future meeting or uh, potentially um, Providing for a break period to ensure that uh, there, there is a sufficient time to uh, to narrow down the language there, uh, but I will let uh, other staff and our uh, solicitor uh, speak uh, on this as well. Thanks, Sam. And if I if I may uh, comment uh, uh, th through the chair, um, I think it's similar to what you're, you're just uh, explaining. I, I think if if the committee is interested in the um, the exemption process notification to be increased from 30 meters to 100 meters for a specific number. I'd suggest that is something that could be a, an amendment to, to the motion and forwarded on to the regional council. However, it sounds like the discussion is also looking at uh, there's, there's a notification requirements to do with uh, construction management plans, which is also you know, kind of it is also layered on top as well as notification requirements when it comes to blasting. So, if it's a request to look at notification kind of across the board when it comes to construction related noise, then I'd suggest that would be a, a supplementary report would probably be best for, re, for us to kind of look at those bylaws and consult with staff and come back with more information and advice on that. But if it is just, if, if it is just the exemption process notification, then it is something that is, that would be something you could do as part of a um, amended motion, I believe. Thank you, uh, Ben, for that. So, uh, Councillor Smith, did you want to move um, a narrow amendment on the, all, along those lines? Yeah, let's. I I would support, and I want to hear from other colleagues. I'd support asking for a supplemental report. Um, if a deferral is 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 work for folks, that's fine. But I don't mind asking for a supplemental report, passing this, and getting that information at council. But understanding that there might be more discussion that folks want to have here. So, Chair, I'll 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 ask you your preference. Would you rather supplemental report to come back to this committee or supplemental supplemental report? that comes to council in passing this before I make it my motion. <laughs> well, now you're putting me in a tricky spot as chair. Um, I, I mean, it, it depends on the on the scope. Uh, you know, if Councillor Purdy is interested in changing uh, some hours, you know, that really starts to feel like, well, that's probably a supplemental report. That's not something we want to edit on the fly. If we're just going to adjust one number, uh, you know, regarding, you know, notification, uh, that to me feels like something that we could amend and then pass on to regional with a recommendation. It really depends on the scope because I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing some small things from the committee and some larger things from the committee. Uh, I do see our solicitor has her hands up, hand up, so we'll go to uh, Ms. Bootler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to the councillors. Um, there are a number of things that have been discussed here uh, on this topic. 
if, if you're looking at a narrow amendment, as, as was discussed uh, uh, with respect to the exemption, so the proposed new uh, section 6E, um, subsection one, uh, refers to, uh, for those businesses that would go through the exemption, the proposed exemption process, um, that the notification uh, is 30 meters. If, if the intent of uh, council or the committee is to extend that particular uh, subsection from 30 meters to a greater amount, um, it, would, it wouldn't be substantive because this is uh, currently proposed. If you're looking at overall notification requirements extending from 30 meters to a greater amount, there's other uh, sections in the in this bylaw that refer to the 30 meters. There's also been discussion about the blasting bylaw, which is a completely different bylaw. Um, and uh, if, there's, if there's a general uh, desire to see notifications uh, look, um, to be in an area of greater than 30 meters uh, that applies across a number of different bylaws and there's definitely a supplementary report uh, that would need to be um, come forward with that. If you're looking at just changing the hours for, for example, the construction. Uh, so again, uh, I go down and I look at um, under uh, the prohibited um, times that are proposed for uh, both the new prohibitive times for the construction activities and for the rock breaking, which is on page 14 of your, um, your package. Uh, if, if you were, were to make an amendment to change that, um, I heard earlier from uh, eight o'clock to uh, a later time, that would not be substantive. Uh, that could certainly be done on the floor uh, and the motion amended. Um, but if you're, if you're talking about things that haven't, haven't been put on the floor and people haven't had a chance to respond to them, um, then we're probably looking at a supplemental report. And I remind councillors that, um, that the committee cannot request a supplemental report on behalf of council. Um, the committee can request a supplemental report that would come back to this committee for review. Um, if council wants a supplemental report on an item, it's up to them to um, request a supplemental report. Thank you, Ms. Bootlier. Um, so that gives us a fair bit to chew on. Uh, Councillor Smith, um, did you want to... Uh, <laughs> most of your time has been chewed up in procedure. Uh, did you want to put something forward or would you like me yeah. to serve back to you? I can put something forward the, for us to defer decision pending supplementary report. And I can list those things that I, I have concerns and we can just add on. Um, so I'll put the motion forward that we defer decision uh, pending a supplementary report that includes should I just say my things first? Yep, list okay. yours. That's a good way to start. Yep, so include uh, expanding notification area for the exemption and explores expanding the notification area, I guess in general. <laughs> but, that, that's a difficult one because I, I do understand it, it falls under different um, bylaws, but we'll, we'll, if we're going to get the supplementary report, maybe that information could be in there. Okay. Um, is there a second for, for that? I'll second that. Um, I just uh, have a question though for Councillor Smith, uh, if, if you can expand on in general. <laughs> Because uh, yeah. I, I would just feel more comfortable if we actually had some clear delineation. Yeah, and, and I, I'm happy to do that. So expanded notification area um, related to blasting and construction noise notification. Okay, and feel so free to feel free to make friendly amendments. 
So we're, we'll be on the amendment. Perhaps you can type that into the chat, uh, Councillor Smith. Um, there is a third option here, which is we are making a recommendation to regional council. Uh, if the committee was not in the mode of like trying to do this today, uh, we do have another kick at it at regional council. So there is always that option too. Um, so we do have a motion of deferral uh, for a supplemental report. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak on this motion, on the motion to defer? And this would include perhaps uh, adding other, other things if there was a, uh, if they could be considered friendly amendments, knowing that we can't amend an amendment. Uh, Councillor Purdy, I see your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to potentially add to this, if that's okay. We can't amend, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, Ms. Bootlier, but we can't amend this because it's an amendment or can we amend this because it's a motion to defer to add other things? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the councillors, uh, I believe that because this is a motion to defer pending a supplementary report, if uh, Councillor Smith um, agrees that it's a friendly amendment to his his motion, uh, it can it can be done. What if it's an unfriendly amendment? Can you can you amend a motion to defer to include other things? <laughs> so, so I'll just say that it's friendly because I was expecting <laughs> things to get added on. So that's 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 fine for me. You're and we're lucky you're a friendly guy, uh, <laughs> uh, Councillor Purdy. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Councillor Smith. Appreciate that. I was wondering if we can add um, the, the potential of the hours of end times, Monday to Friday, uh, to be changed from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's it's a compromise, but it would not have as um, much of an impact on the construction industry uh, and. I really, really think this communicate this expansion of communication is is such a poignant piece to the to the puzzle here. Construction isn't going away. If, if we're doing our regional plan and center plan, I mean this this is this is it. it it's going to be very difficult. So we need to have excellent communication. It needs to be expanded and it needs to be robust. Um, and I love what Councillor Lovelace explained there with, with the door-to-door the -door, uh, personal touch. I, I think that is so important. This is, <laughs> you, you don't want to be hated. You don't, it's just, it's just public relations. It's communication. It, it's a no-brainer to me. It, it needs to be done well. I'm wondering if that is done well, can we revisit the reduction in hours from blasting from like what 93.5 to 50 hours per week? Um, I think it was Duncan who, who said that this would have a very negative impact on, on the blasters. Like that's, that's their livelihood. They only have a short period of you know, season um, to do their work. And if that's reduced by almost 50%, that's a huge impact. If communications were improved for the times of blasting, would, would we be able to consider maybe alleviating that drastic reduction in available hours for that particular um, construction work? I what I'm hearing there, Councillor Purdy, is um, some maybe a question for staff um, in, in in that. Okay, we'll we'll go to staff. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so, just to clarify, looking at, I, I guess I'm trying to pick out the different strands here. So there'd be, and looking at changing the end time to 9 p.m. from the proposed 8 p.m., uh, looking at improving communication methods or looking at alternate communication methods um, and revisiting the hours proposed for the rock breaking.
Yeah, I, th I think that okay. catches it all, uh, Ms. Totten. Okay. Um, I mean, certainly that I believe all those things can be considered in a supplementary report. I would defer to legal just to be certain, but I believe that all of them are issues that we could deal with uh, as I think everything except potentially the uh, expanded communication methods are already dealt with in the existing report. Okay, um, so uh, Councillor Purdy, uh, do you want to add anything on to this potential uh, supplemental report regarding uh, rock breaking blasting? Just if it's possible to to not reduce those hours to 50% if there's a robust communication strategy in place to let residents know when it's happening, how long it will last, what to expect, and, and well in advance so that they have a good they have a, a good understanding of what's going on and it's not hitting them, you know, in surprise. It mm -hmm. so well maybe we can leave that open-ended as potential um uh increased hours for rock uh for rock breaking could could i i'm muted nope you we can hear no, you can hear. oh okay good sorry i had a message so just to clarify it's just the proposed hours for rock breaking that we would be revisiting not the hours for blasting as that is a separate bylaw what so sorry so so just that whatever was 93.5 hours down to 50 hours per week whatever that entails yeah that, that's that's just the rock breaking so the non-explosive okay. methods of breaking rock okay. uh mr chair uh solicitor here uh from what i understand then um is that the request is to uh, consider not um, reducing the hours for rock breaking at all if there is the ability to put a robust uh, communication strategy in place. Is that what I understand? That's what I'm hearing too, uh, Ms. Solicitor. Uh, the, the only other thing is uh, perhaps there's a range of potential options here between 93 and 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That could, that could come back in a report. Uh, well, Councillor Smith has helpfully, help, helpfully post, pasted into the threat into the chat. Um, explore expanding or improving notification for blasting and construction related noise that includes further communication to affected properties. Uh, I think this would be is this this is rock breaking. You mean right? No. So this is related to the first comment uh, from from Councillor Lovelace, where it was in general, just to kind of to make it a little bit more clear that we're. We want to look at improving the communication related to blasting and construction. Oh, oh sorry. Related noise. sorry, I misunderstood. Sorry, I thought yeah. I was throwing an assist to Councillor Purdy. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. So this is this is just to clarify more that we okay. want to look at better ways of communicating um, that notification. Okay. They, I think our clerk can uh, can incorporate that into this motion that we are gathering. Um, so uh, the ball is with you, Councillor Purdy. Um, we're at six minutes here of your second go around of three. Uh, do you, are, <laughs> well, I guess we're on the amendment. So on the motion to defer. So uh, it, do you have something you want to add regarding those, the, the, the rock breaking? So would, would we just say to, to explore uh, different ranges of time, time reductions to not have such a negative impact on, on the industry? Uh, I, I, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know what the proper wording would be for that. Uh, well, perhaps uh, you can we you can word Options something better, and we can come back to you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lovelace explores options of time reductions for rock breaking. Okay. Well, if that were if the mover and seconder to feel that's friendly to include to the list, we can add that. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm good. And, and th these, these are my comments uh, regarding the time changes. So um, I don't need to speak now, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, um, there's been so much going on that I have lost track of who is next. So is there anyone else who was wanting to speak on this motion to defer? I'm not hearing anyone. So if uh, I may, I actually would like to speak <laughs> just to throw some more complication. Um, <laughs> I can do that from here if the committee wishes, or I think it would be Councillor Smith could take over as chair being the only past chair that we have of the committee here uh, present at this time. Um, uh, the chair. Either. Sorry. Speak from the chair. It makes sense. Okay. Uh, so the one the one th piece that I'm I interested in, and I, I haven't had a full opportunity to really kind of digest this piece of work. Um, I, I had missed that it had actually been attached. I thought I was still waiting to sign the thing. So I literally only read it an hour uh, before committee started. So I really haven't had my usual opportunity to really think this over. Um, the one piece that uh, I, I question actually for staff to just to, to start, um, the, the holiday piece as it is now, um, you can do work on a holiday, including Remembrance Day, like right now without these changes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that a feedback that I have, I, I mean, I get the construction complaints too, and I take the industry's point that it's like, well, you know, pick your poison. Do you want a longer period to get this work done uh, with more disruption or do you want some respites um, in, 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 in intermixed? And one of the ones that, um, you know, when I think about holidays um, that I think would be reasonable, most construction sites seem to not operate on holidays anyway. Uh, I think it, I kind of like the idea of breaking holidays out from Sunday and um, not allowing construction activity on those holidays. Um, I was at Sullivan's Pond a couple uh, years ago for Remembrance Day, and there was actually a crew there to do, uh, I think it was a road project. They were all keyed up and ready to go. Thankfully, the foreman there had the good sense, seeing the, you know, the crowd down at the Cenotaph to not start any of the bulldozing and jackhammering and all of that until the ceremony was done. But there was nothing legally to say that he, that they couldn't have start to have done that. So um, I would like to add to this supplemental report the possibility of, uh, per, uh, of preventing uh, construction activity on holidays. And I guess maybe before I do that, um, I'd like to go to staff just to see if that's something that they contemplated was separating holidays from Sundays. So uh, it is something that we looked at. The one thing the, that I would note is that all these changes do apply to small home renovation projects as well. There's no differentiation in the noise bylaw between large developments and someone, you know, building their deck. So uh, any ban on construction on certain days would apply to all types of construction. We don't have any ability to, you know, because uh, that 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 is a good point about the flip side of uh, of the holiday being that that's oftentimes you get three day you get a long weekend and that's the time that the do it yourself or homeowners are are sometimes hard at work. Um, did we? Uh, is there any ability to separate out small, you know, that small do it yourself or from the large scale road or construction project? It is something that we struggled with, I would say. Um, it's difficult to place a limit on what's considered small. Uh, is it someone doing it themselves? Is it someone hiring one contractor? Uh, it became a little unwieldy to attempt to, to look at, but if it is a supplementary report, it's something that we could revisit. Okay, well, <laughs> With that in mind, I think I might just leave it alone. My own inclination is that I think on holidays, holidays should be holidays. But, uh, you know, I don't want to accidentally ban someone from uh, building their deck on uh, on a long Labor Day weekend. Uh, thank you for that. So, oh, wait, I can't just sign off in the chair. Uh, okay, so uh, is there anything further uh, from committee? I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I'm not seeing anyone. Oh, Councillor Lovelace. Oh, I, I was just going to call for the question, Mr. Chair. 
The question on this motion to defer has been called. So all those in favor? If I, if I can just uh, check, uh, Mr. Chair, just to ensure that uh, the, the wording uh, as circulated most recently in the chat is, is the correct uh, version of those, uh, those proposed amendments, just uh, if, if possible, to make sure that I'm, I'm on the right track. You certainly, if everyone could take a moment just to look at the uh, four point motion there, uh, perhaps I'll read it out just for anyone following along who can't uh, read our chat. So it's uh, that the Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee defer consideration pending a supplemental report that includes one, exploring options to expand the notification area and communications methods for exemptions. Two, explore expanding or improving notification for blasting and construction related noise that includes further communication to affected properties. Three, explore changes to weekend end time hours, Monday to Friday, 9 p.m. for non-explosive rock breaking. Four, explore options for time reductions for non-explosive rock breaking. Uh, so let's just make a, a, a point that from a grammar perspective, just each of those should say explore, not explorers or exploring, uh, but I'm, I'm fine with those changes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Uh, I'm seeing no uh, no other signs of objection or uh, <laughs> or concern. So I think we have a motion here. So the question was called. Uh, all those in all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. So we've deferred this, and staff will come back uh, with some uh, more detail on those four uh, asks of the committee. So. Thank you, everyone. That was uh, more chairing work than I think I've ever done in my five years. Uh, so moving along, where's my annotated agenda gone in all this? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to uh, make, wish uh, Councillor Purdy a very happy birthday today. Oh, <laughs> happy birthday, Councillor Purdy. Uh, perhaps, <laughs> well, perhaps we can finish in the next 15 minutes so she can have a bir birthday lunch. Uh, so moving along, our next piece is 12.1.2, Councillor Nomination to Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll put that on the floor. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. I move that Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee request the CAO. Oh, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> I move that Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee recommend that Halifax Regional Council appoint Councillor Hensby to the Heritage Advisory Committee for a term to November 2022, uh, as outlined in the discussion section of this report. Do we have a second? I have second a second. Uh, any discussion on that? Councillor Lovelace? Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> enthusiasm there uh so that that one is done so 12.2 uh, members of standing committee none uh 12.3 community design advisory committee none 12.4 heritage advisory none which brings us to motions uh 13.1 uh councillor smith can you take over the chair yep uh off to you councillor Thank you, uh, Mr. I guess fill-in chair, um, past chair, past chair. There we go. Uh, I move that the Community Planning Economic Development Standing Committee request that the CEO review the municipality's use of the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places in Canada and evaluating all alterations to heritage properties and properties within heritage conservation districts. The requested report should explore options to better adapt conservation standards to HRM's local heritage context. I'll Seconder. second that. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And so this motion, um, it comes out of discussions that Councillor Mason originally started with staff. Uh, he's not on this committee, so uh, it got handed, handed off my way along the way. Um, and it really comes from a place of like we, uh, the, the metric we use in evaluating heritage is that it, I mean, it is that formal standards and guidelines. And, you know, there is there are places in there where it can sometimes be a bit unwieldy. And there's some uncertainty because one of the key par key parts of it is uh, that, uh, you know, new development at heritage properties should not subordinate the heritage property. And so there's 
there's uncertainty is, well, really, what does that mean? And we've had some situations where that's been litigated. We've had situations where, you know, it's it, it, it really strikes me as is not unlike what we've been trying to do with the center plan, which was get to a place of certainty. And this is a, very, a thing that's very much vague right now. And so I think it's worth taking a look at that piece in particular, but also just the whole, the whole set of standards to make sure that they are serving us well um, here in HRM in our local heritage context. So uh, that's where this motion is coming from. Um, and uh, I would hope that the committee will agree to take a look at this. Thank you. All right. Mm, usually we don't have much discussion on motion, but if there's any questions uh, that folks have clarification, feel free to ask them now. Question? All right, question's been called. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that passes and the chair is yours. Okay, now I need to open up my other window again. Okay, so that's uh, heritage uh, conservation standards done. Uh, in camera, we have none. We have no added items. Um, any notices of motion from committee today? Oh, Councillor Cuddle. I keep, I keep, oh, I'm not even muted. I'm like, I can't find my mute button. There we go. Um, yes, I do have um, a notice of motion I would like to bring forward. Um, that the Community Planning and Economic Development Committee request a staff report to define and provide rationale for urban, suburban, and rural settlement, settlement classifications conduct an internal review of how these settlement classifications are used across HRM strategies and policies, including planning, transit, sewer and water, and taxation, and provide a jurisdictional review of how other municipalities define and apply settlement classifications, and provide a recommendation for standard use of these terms within HRM. Okay, thank you, Councillor Cuddle, for that notice of motion. Uh, things to come. Uh, any other notices of motion? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, we've already done our public participation. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our meeting. The date of the next meeting will be October 21st, 2021. Um, so I would take a notice, uh, motion to adjourn at this time. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn from Councillor Cuddle. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great job, Sam. Well done. <laughs>